All right, so we're recording. The mics are on. Everything's good. Yeah. I have put my baseball cap back on because I'm confident I can sit here, wear a baseball hat, and not hit my microphone with it. So, new year, new me, everyone. I'm proud of you, man. I think you got this. <sighs> Thank you. I appreciate the the confidence. Um, you watching us at home can't see this, but across from Sandry and myself is a statue that Zach has brought up <laughs> multiple <laughs> times. And the I statue or, or the the head, the the sculpture, the oh, sculpture. the head sculpture, the bust. Okay, so can you describe it? Um, if <laughs> if Dobby the house elf and Woodhouse from Archer like crashed into each other and and molded together, <laughs> that's exactly what this looks like. Only made out of what I can only assume is blue candle wax. <laughs> it's it's pottery clay. <laughs> <laughs> it's mesmerizing, is what it is. It is. I've been staring at it yeah. the whole night, and it's been staring at me. <laughs> I, that that was my first attempt at a clay sculpture. I th- I think it turned out pretty pretty well. Yeah, I I, I want to display that in my home. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. the, I was I was obviously very happy, as you can see, with my frown on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he looks pretty distraught. Okay. <laughs> that was that same art class that um, I had to have mandatory counseling after my shenanigans <laughs> class. <laughs> I did, I, did I tell after, you this? after the? Are uh, you talking about the the goat skull or? Yeah, yeah. I, I had I. They were like, "Oh, just draw anything, and we're going to elaborate on it." Because she's like, you, "Everybody sketch something, and then we add paint to it." And I drew a goat head that was like decapitated. And it, and <laughs> and what, this was third grade, fourth grade. Oh no, no, no! This was a uh, high school, a main okay. style. Oh Ma- come ma- on! Ma- you had to have counseling for that. They, no, but because you know what happened, she's. Do you remember Miss Meyer, Bill? I never had her, but I knew okay. of her. Well, she. I don't know. Like, I can't explain it. She was very biased on. You can only paint this. You can only paint like. I can't explain it. It was like... Uh, so she was a terrible art teacher. Yeah, she's like, oh, everybody be themselves, but, in only, but only only if you way. adhere to these rules. Yeah. It can only be Picasso. Art is know. about discipline. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was it was weird. I don't know. It was a weird situation. So, so one day after she kind of like reported me for the goat head, she was like, <laughs> <laughs> she's like all right, we want to make everyone feel, uh, you know, <laughs> like like they're equal here. Uh, so we're going to add some more art and we're going to let everyone pick a different playlist when we listen to music in class. <laughs> Today, since... So what, you played Guar? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, because me and my buddy wanted to make her feel uncomfortable because she's like really wrinkly and 70. We put on Hot for Teacher. Nice. <laughs> and um, we were kind of we were kinda like fake, like when she'd walk around and try and look at everyone's drawing, we'd like fake try uh, and act like we're going to grab her ass. even Even though, I don't know. I've, she might like it. I think if if she was just being herself, we might get into some love relationship there. No, but uh, <laughs> anyways, after that, I um yeah, I had to have like some mandatory counseling thing. And he, and <laughs> <laughs> that, that transition is golden. Yeah, that, it, <laughs> oh, I wonder why. Well, well, <laughs> well, well, the counseling it, it just it it grows better and better because um I I really didn't want to talk to her at all. It was just straight up like. Sopranos therapy session. I'm just sitting there like, all right, when the fuck is this going to be over? I have to stay an hour after class to listen to this shit because these people think there's something wrong with me. And uh, one day I was just like, all right, because she just kept trying to get into me for like three weeks. She's like, come on, Philip, tell me what's wrong. What's bothering you? And I'm like, all right, I'll tell you. I lost a friend recently and it's it's hit pretty hard. I can't. It's been a friend that um, I've, it's they've been next to me every night i've been uh we had a lot of love together each night it's like wait a minute is this a is this some boy or girl in the school i'm like no it's a, it was a boy but it um they're not from this school it's like so are you are you gay i'm like no i'm not gay. he's like all right phil you need to stop it you're just messing with me i'm like no i'm serious it's like how did they die i'm like i don't know i've had them forever uh what was 
what what did it feel like how did what happened like i don't know if i want to talk about it like all right well we can ease into this what was their name it was goldie it was my goldfish and he's like all right get the hell out of here this kid's hopeless i can't help him and like that's how i got out of it because she's like he's he's even fucking with me (laughs) no 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 therapy is gonna help him so what a what a great perspective for a therapist to have. <laughs> nope, you are irreparably broken. <laughs> <laughs> well then well then they sent me um they uh because I was getting I wasn't in high honors, but I was in like honors, like straight A's and B's. They're like, Oh, he's he's totally ready for college and he's an asshole that we don't want on the premises. <laughs> so we're just gonna uh so they graduated you early. <laughs> yeah. Well well they uh it was because, you know, for they expelled you? For half a year, I was supposed to go a full year there. So instead of a full year, I went half a year to a anger management course that they had. It was um in the basement, you know, North Cook. Yeah. You know what that was? Yeah, that's that's what we did. It was it was like a fucking hippie yoga teacher. Reminds me of the guy, the hippie on Beavis and Butthead. And he, it was me, and then a bunch of like white kids trying to be Eminem, doing yoga together. I'm like, yes, breathe in, breathe out. There are no gangs in this world. It's just you and the energy, you know. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. Also inaccurate. Right. Right. But the reason I wanted to bring up art class is I didn't get in trouble in sixth grade, but the art assignment was to make like a colored pencil drawing of a song, like what a song means to you, what the song's about. Pick a song and do a drawing for it. And I picked Janie's Got a Gun by Aerosmith. Yeah. <laughs> and so my colored pencil drawing featured a tombstone on fire, so like a burning cross, and like this Samara looking, you know, chick from the ring looking figure crawling from the grave. And it was, I guess, a darker piece of art. <laughs> and at the end of the year you had to pick <laughs> you had to pick one piece of art from like the course during the year that like represents you that you want to showcase. And I said, Mr. Dinus, I want to showcase this colored pencil drawing. And he said, No, no, absolutely not. So I think I think I was misunderstood as a boy. You know, I had a I had a similar experience my uh my senior year of high school in a creative writing class. Um, my writing has always been a little bit on the darker side of things, particularly being, uh, being bullied in high school. And I wrote a short essay that, that went into like the end of the year, you know, like storybook for the class that was stream of consciousness of a, of, uh, of a kid who is bullied, who, who shoots and kills somebody who steals a cigarette out of his mouth. (laughs) <laughs> and and that that did warrant a uh, a quick talking to by by our teacher Mr. Potter who who is a wonderful teacher and like the nicest guy in the world but he was pretty concerned. <laughs> He's like, "Hey, everything's okay. I've been reading what you've been writing. <laughs> like, you're all right." <laughs> like, "Yeah, I'm fine." And I think the I think what kind of spurred that is we had him, I had him my last semester eighth period and he would never mark anyone absent. So, like We'd skip that class all the time and go like smoke weed in the parking lot and leave, yeah. and like that coupled with the super dark like <laughs> like writing that I was doing kind of kind of like sent off some signals. <laughs> <Is> that... sure. <laughs> but I'm <Yeah>. fine. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. This was this was pretty bad. I think this was one of the times where I really got Stubbs mad. Um, <laughs> His name is Brad. Okay. We we uh so um before this I actually um when I when I went to uh get my associates I went to Triton and there was a teacher there. Uh she's not really cool with me anymore. <laughs> but um she she said that I was the best fucking writing student that she had. I I I I sometimes get self-conscious about it that I think I sound a lot dumber than when I'm right on paper. And it's happened many times where I'd write something and be like, dude, you fucking plagiarized this. There's no way you wrote this. You, even even when I when I um when I graduated uh four year college, I wrote five different papers for different people for money. 
because I was like that good at writing. And but um, uh, I mean that's straying off topic. I never really got into it. But point is, so I had this class with this. Her name was Duda. Uh, she was Yugoslavian, and um, we had um, she was best friends with Sna- uh, Bob Rock's girlfriend, and that's how I met them. But a- anyways. Okay. We, anyways, I'm I'm in her class and she's like, you know, you're the best fucking. Um, Bob Rock has a girlfriend. Yeah, right. Weird. Uh, but um, uh, so, uh, so my teacher, she said that whoever wins the best writing thing gets to go on our college radio station and recite uh, a poem or something or a piece of your writing. And I suggested I'm like, well, hey, I I'm not in the band anymore. I had the same exact uh recorder that we're recording the Sean. I was like, why not we start a like radio show and just and uh at the time podcasts weren't really that big, so we'd just record uh like a clip like this and then she'd put it on the college radio website. So um I <laughs> she's like, Well what do you want to call it? I'm gonna have my friend Sneza on it and and I guess they're both like super huge. So wait, it was Duda and Sneza? Yeah. Are, are these common Polish name or Yugoslav names? I, or? I, yeah, I don't know. It's <laughs> but sound like cartoon characters. To yeah, be yeah, yeah. Right. They sound like the henchmen. Duda, Sneza, Duda and Sneva. Duda, Sneza, and Philip. Or like, <laughs> like like the monsters that they sick on people. Like Sneza, attack! So well, no, it was Dubravka was the full name, and then Snezana. <laughs> Oh, all right. Never mind. That. So Dubravka well, is one hell of a name. Right. That is one hell of a name. Well, so so she's like, well, what do you want to call it? I'm like, uh, I know you guys. I was like, I don't want to be offensive, but we're going to do it once a month, right? Poetry music show, right? Once a month, PMS. You know, <laughs> why not call it that? And Super tasteful, by the <laughs> way. <laughs> well, well, they they thought it was <laughs> clever, though. Yeah, that's, that's pretty fucking clever. <laughs> The pizza place Will Patton worked at, if you ordered pepperoni, mushroom, and sausage, they'd put extra sauce on it because they thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, continue. So, so, so yes, yeah, <laughs> so we ended up having this show, and I it was it was pretty cool. We we get I'd get like a few bands of like my friends, and we'd play their music on it, and it would go on college radio. But point is, I needed to find people since poet the p part the poetry part. I'd have, I'd have to find people to recite poems. Sure. Adela was on there and and recited one of her poems. But then Brad goes on there, and this reminds me. I, I forget when when you were saying about your creative writing, kind of like dark or whatever. Well, I have kind of dark writing. I never knew because I was raised in a Polish household. I never really knew the term glass half empty, or glass half full or whatever. I never knew that until like recently. So when we had the show, he wrote a poem called like glass half empty and i was like oh fuck it's got something to do with those half fingers you know <laughs> <laughs> and i think i asked him about it and yeah that's when things kind of went south and he started to be friends with ross sure but you eventually learned the expression yeah yeah well i was gonna name uh well one of my albums on the electronic shit is trash half empty Ooh, so that's good I like to think that the garbage bin is always, you know, trash half full. Oh, garbage dump. Oh, garbage dump. Why Dude, speaking are you called a garbage dump? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so yeah, we're, no, we're all big Charles Manson that's, fans here. That's, 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 what the, that's what his flaming tombstone is singing right now, <laughs> the, the one that you drew. Yeah. That. <laughs> no, dude, that was for Janie because she died in vain. You don't get it. Mr. Dynas didn't get it. <laughs> no one got it. You know, uh, Gavin, I watched, um, this was kind of funny because I told him, like, you, you know, I kind of uh, encouraged him to be more creative. If you wanted to learn guitar, learn guitar. If he, he is amazing at writing. They they told us he's, like, two grades ahead as far as writing. He reads books quicker than me. I mentioned this. And he fucking, um, we watched Donnie Darko, and it kind of yes. freaked him out. I love that movie. Right? I I I love it because it's kind of reminds me of like sleeping disorder, you know, like a little bit. And, 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 yeah, and, that, and the the mindset that like weird like in between dream like yeah. dream and real life. I know exactly what you're talking about. Aura? Or, yeah, uh, yeah. I like it cuz it freaks little kids out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so he watched it and then the next day I pick him up from the after school program 
and that's they kind of like it's just two supervisors and let they let them run fucking wild and do whatever the hell they want so gavin was drew a rainbow and then underneath it he wrote death in rainbow colors <laughs> 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 and they're like yeah we need to talk to you about this drawing <laughs> should we be concerned about this and, I, and then i asked him about it. he's like i feel fine i thought it was cool <laughs> like, it is pretty cool to yeah. be fair yeah so hey uh, uh <laughs> albert camus wrote a book called the happy death uh, i don't know if that uh, that pertains at all but that should be the cover for it yeah maybe not the subject matter but you know what i was thinking about so are you guys familiar with the term happy trail yes like, do you know where the happy trail is or, or, or treasure trail I've oh heard. that's good too yeah. so, i'm thinking of something is that the where a woman shaves her vagina the uh, right way? No, it's the trail of hair from like your belly button. Oh yeah, yeah. Down. So that I've always known as the happy trail, and I got to thinking about like, what if you move to a place and they're not familiar with that term, and you just happen to bring it up like, oh, you know, your happy trail. And they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? You guys don't ever think about things like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I not be? not that specifically. <laughs> just, right. I'm just trying to imagine the con- how the conversation got to got to happy trails. Be like, you know, the happy trail. Well, it's like I don't know. Language is interesting and it's yeah. always evolving. Oh yeah. Well, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I'm going to <laughs> but cut, I'm you off. cut you off. Yeah. Because that reminded me, we were talking about field of dreams. One of the weird um, facts of it was, so the book is based on. In the movie, it's a, it's based on the suit. I, I don't know. It, I guess it's a really significant problem or controversy at the time. But the book was based on the Comanche tribe. There was a book? Yeah, yeah. There was a book beforehand. And um, the movie is based on the Sioux tribe. And what happened is uh, the one of the main uh, Native American actors, he could only speak, I think, Wait, Comanche. Are you talking about Dances with Wolves or are we back to Field of Dreams? Oh, my God. I'm an idiot. Yeah, Dances with Wolves. Okay. What the fuck right. is wrong with me? <laughs> 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 anyway, say like that, that's a whole part of can Field of Dreams. T- I don't remember. Can uh, you guys tell that I'm on a Kevin Costner? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love that guy. I think he's a very attractive man. A n- 90s Kevin Costner, though. Not not 2018 wrinkled up nutsack. Uh, well, a little <laughs> harsh. So we're talking about Dances with Wolves. Yeah, not yeah. Not Field of Dreams. Yeah. So so okay. the the main... <laughs> there's a native... So Field of Dreams is not based on a book. No, no. <laughs> okay. I don't think it is. <laughs> that that had to have been the, like the driest read of all. <laughs> like Field of Dreams. Because, like, like, yeah. you know, it goes into great detail outside no, man, of that it movie. Is. It's just... I was on this good crack, and it all made sense at the end. <laughs> Field of Dreams and Dances with Wolves are actually go hand in hand together. I wanna, I wanna find that like degrees of separation. Well, well, so what else? They um, so the book is based on the, I think Comanche tribe, but the movie's based on Sioux. But when they lo- were looking for extras, like uh, N- American Indian, Native American extras for the movie. Because they knew about the book, a lot of them only spoke Sioux instead of Comanche. So they're like, you better fucking learn Comanche or you're not getting this job. And they learned, they all uh, like had to fucking learn this forcefully or they get fired within two days. They had to fucking learn what to say and shit. And the funny, I didn't even know this, that this exists in like Native American uh, language, that there's male ways to say shit and female ways. And it was kind of an inside joke for the native americans that love dances with wolves that the whole fucking movie the because i think like 40 percent of it they're speaking in comanche is everybody speaking in the female way so they're like oh <laughs> <laughs> those girly boys you know? <laughs> so i thought that was kind of interesting I wonder if that was like some sort of statement from like from like the Sioux tribe, be like, yeah, the, we're not gonna learn it. We're we're gonna learn your language, but we're gonna we're gonna make it a joke somehow. Yeah, it's an act of retribution that no one will understand. Yeah, <laughs> like who's watching the movie? It's like, hey, they're not using the masculine conjugation for those. <laughs> 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 Does does anyone know? And they, uh, Comanche nerds everywhere. That, that's like, that's like why I love that movie. That that's why I love those fucking uh, like random facts because it's like, who the fuck cares about this fact? You know, 
I think that another one was there's a scene where they uh, skin a shitload of buffalo, and they were saying how they were actually made out of paper mache, but they got like 24 police calls by the like townspeople where they were filming because they thought it was actually buffalo slaughtered. I don't know. It's just random. Fucking yeah, and that's like super illegal now. Yeah, super illegal. I remember that was always like the cool thing about uh, Fermi Lab that they had that they had buffalo on the. Oh sure. I don't know if you're. What is a uh, Fermi Lab? Yeah. Uh, F- Fermi Lab is in. Uh, well, I think it spans over or like it's in situated between towns, but I always think of it as being in like Batavia, Illinois, mm-hmm. and they had. Uh, they had like a, a large uh like collider there. I uh Tevatron. Um they actually were they were the ones who reconfirmed like the Higgs boson and all that stuff and like they do a lot of like uh atomic research and stuff like that. Um mm-hmm. but because the collider there, I mean these things are massive. These things are like absolutely massive. Like think of like the Hadron Collider in in France. Um mm-hmm. or, I don't want to. They, uh, yeah, it brings yeah. back bad memories uh, t- uh, of okay, I, uh, of singularities created in uh, in Bill's t- Bill's mind. Stop. Um, it. Oh, wait, I'm pissed off now. <laughs> but it, it it spans like a whole like plot of land. Like there's a ton, a ton of land that it spans, and for majority of it, they left it like uh, like as prairie land. And at one point, I can't remember. There was some sort of reason for it. I don't know exactly why, but there were buffalo there, and they like brought buffalo in. There was like buffalo that lived there. I don't know if they still do or, or or what was about it, but I just remember that when I was little, like going like, "Oh, like this is so cool." Yeah, and I mean, it is a really cool place, and they hold like uh, they have like a theater that they have people come and like speak about these sort of things, like a lot of like scientific literacy stuff, and like, it's really cool. Hmm. And the Kibachi would have a field day, a field day there. And I I played once at their uh, government sponsored bar. Really? Yeah. I knew you the, sell I knew, out. I knew the <laughs> I knew the bartender. So I I can't remember exactly what it was called. It was it was called something like something like very very like like government like the like recreation like recreation center or something and they, it was basically just like a bar and they had like pool tables and ping pong tables yeah to where like the the scientists who lived on campus would go because they have like like they have a they have like housing there and stuff but it's it's a lot like being in like a, like military housing yeah because they have i mean they have scientists uh, internationally come and like stay there and do research and they you know they live in a house on the land there and and they all go to the rec center to get drunk yeah. and i played there once <laughs> it was kind of cool there was well, like no is- one there and all i wanted to do was sit down and talk to an astrophysicist but i didn't get <laughs> i didn't get my opportunity oh i bet it was a real chick fest huh all the ladies on campus <laughs> Uh, you know, it was it was a mix of the of the like eight people who were there. <laughs> do All the right. do the scientists throw like crazy hooker parties over there? I bet they do. I I was not that invited. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you that. You need a hadron yeah. membership. Right? Yeah. yeah, they they like a oh, f- uh, fucking ignorant townie coming in What's here playing bluegrass handy? music. <laughs> you know, I was thinking how you mentioned uh, Happy Trail. If you mention that in another language, what would people wouldn't people be like, Well what is unhappy trail? And I will tell you what an unhappy trail is. Have you ever have you ever went out with somebody I had an ex where no. I was like let's go let's go to a different place. <laughs> have, have you have you ever had where where you're like, Hey, what can I do to spice shit up? And I'm like, Well, you could have a little square happy trail that you could shave into your you know? And dude, oh, a landing strip. Is that what it is? That what <laughs> yeah. it's called? Oh, okay. So I don't even know how to call it now. That's how you spice up your. Well, you well shave something into your pubes. That's <laughs> that dude, like I don't like shave my. I, name I was I was into on. that. Yeah, I was into that at the time. Fuck. I mean, I and, and what what sucks is it wasn't a landing strip. It was more like uh you know abandoned Fallout landing strip because she fucking like. It sucks, you know, when you watch porn, it's like a perfect, you know, very straight landing strip. And then when somebody does it, you know, you need somebody to do it for you. It's, it was just like, oh, no, that's the, 
fucking leaning tower of Pisa, you know, strip, you know, fucking. <laughs> It's like, I, and and it sucks because then when you have sex, you can't get it off your mind. You're like, God, that's, <laughs> that's so fucking crooked right now, and it's not because of the way I'm holding them. <laughs> you're just, oh my god. So yeah, there's. That. Or you could. What what do you call when you have you know a landing strip on that hairy asshole tarantula, right? <laughs> I, I hope I, we don't call that anything. We yeah, I don't, there's probably a name for it, but I don't. I don't want to know it. The Sting King would know all about those tarantulas. God, Ugh. I. I just have. I have to go masturbate. I don't know all this talk about. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Land, that's uh, a cricket landing that, strip. That, that, yeah. that spider got you aroused. You know, <laughs> it stung you. Forty-eight hour boner. Now you better get a vaccine. Man, that's. The best terminal illness you can have, right? No, that's not true. No. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm trying to think. I guess that might be true because I'm trying to think of other great terminal illnesses, and not a lot of them are coming to mind. I used to wear a lot of pajamas to high school. Like I would never wear like proper pants. I'd just wear like pajamas, mm-hmm. and that was my thing because I was a bad boy. And <laughs> they made me take driver's ed. I obviously I can't drive. But driver's ed was a requisite to graduate from my high school, so were you were you able to do the test back then? Like, we, no, could you see well? No, I didn't do fucking anything. You um, weren't a, you weren't able to do it back because I thought your vision no. was better. Yeah, but I couldn't drive. Like, I couldn't go out in the car. You couldn't? Uh, no. Oh no. So tunnel vision. So Monday, oh, Wednesday, okay. Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday were the days that they took all the normal students out uh, to go driving. So I just got extra free periods. So. It's like, all right, I've got like a two and a half hour long study period now. Um, but they had like car simulators in the classroom where like, you know, it was like a fake plastic looking car seat and a screen would come down at the front of the classroom and it would like play a video of like the dashboard of a car and like you're driving and like you have to do like on your fake little car what the person driving in the video should do. Yeah. You know, it's a shitty little thing. And I just remember wearing these like comfy ass pants, being in like this kind of comfy ass seat. And my problem was always fighting the boners that I would get in driver's ed class from just being like a hormonal teenager in these like really comfy pants and being in like essentially what's a lounge chair slash like cruising USA like arcade setup. (laughs) And it was just like. Oh no, I that's so I got an A in the class, but that's the the hardest A I ever earned. So, <laughs> so if one of your girlfriends ever asked me, so what is he into? He needs the whole cruise in USA setup. <laughs> yeah, right. And he yeah. better be wearing pajamas. Do you have a driver simulator? <laughs> <laughs> He's just really into car safety. I don't, I don't get it. He can't even well, you, drive. You fucking put that seatbelt on you, I dirty always, whore. <laughs> I would fail those like simulations because I would just like put my hazards on and then just like go back and forth with the steering wheel because it's like I'm like they can't expect me to do anything like I'm not driving like I don't need to learn how to drive but I need this class to graduate Mm. so I would just like just have my foot on the fake brake the entire time I just try and get the worst score I can. And I wound up getting student of the month in that classroom. <laughs> just, just, the teacher liked me. He liked. I introduced myself as Big Bill, and he's like, "Hey, I like that. You're Big Bill." <laughs> you know, I uh, <laughs> I failed. Uh, well, I should have. I should have failed the fuck out of my original driving exam when I got my license. But and I and I shit you not, the driving instructor told me this and said he goes. But you're my, he's like, you're my last driver of the day, and I'm retiring in two weeks, so you pass. I failed the fuck out of that. To, like, I can't parallel park. I couldn't park uphill. I blew a stop sign. <laughs> like, and you still do. <laughs> and, and not, uh, not very often. It happens. <laughs> it happens. But Healthy margin of error. Yeah. You know, we all have one. Naturally. Um. But he just like let me go. He's like, it, like it was, it was the formal version of, eh, fuck it. Yeah. Like you're fine, I guess. Like 
go go cause accidents. And uh, side note, when I was 17 years old, I crashed a car twice. So <laughs> the same car, twice. Uh, different car actually. I crashed two separate vehicles. Actually, the ca- the car I have now, well, which uh, I bought off my mother, and will help you was, move a mattress. Was yes, and will help you move a mattress. Was brand new at the time, and I ran it into a stop sign uh, in the snow and fucked up the front bumper. So there's a new front bumper on on my car. <laughs> oh, hot damn! That's better than Eric knocking down a fucking light pole in <laughs> Springfield. Uh, uh, let me tell you about the second accident <laughs> because, oh, <right. laughs> okay, because right. the second accident Nothing is worse than you, knocking down a light pole. <laughs> it's eerily similar. So, uh, the common denominator actually to, to these two accidents were that my you girlfriend at the time, drunk. my girlfriend at the time oh. was in the car. No, I was not drunk for either of these. Um, <laughs> well, there's your problem. <laughs> but maybe <laughs> because I haven't crashed since then, <laughs> but, uh, I was in I I I had my pickup truck. I my first car was a 1994 Ford Ranger. Oh yeah. I miss it to death. I love pickup trucks and I love that truck. Mm-hmm. Um it was a piece of shit and it was rear wheel drive only and I had no weight in the back. Like a rock. Yeah. That's <laughs> That's like Chevy. That was Chevy's. Uh, yeah. How dare you disparage the Ford? I uh, know. It, dude, it's Ford truck. Ford month. tough. Is it Ford truck month? Is that a thing? I don't know. Uh Anyway, hey, this is brought to you by our unofficial <laughs> sponsor, Ford. Built Ford Tough. Anyway, your girlfriend at the time. Okay, so she was the common denominator that she was in the car, and I was driving from... She lived a block away from me, but I was I drove to her house. I don't know why. I, I did. Mm-hmm. And I picked her up, and we were driving back to my house. A block away. It was a fucking block away. Um, and it was raining outside. And I took the turn really fast. And you were sober. And I was sober. 17 years old, sober. You fool. You fool. And uh, I I took the turn really fast off of her street onto like uh, onto Pleasant Hill, which is like the main street of my neighborhood. <laughs> the meanest street in all of Wheaton. Oh, yeah. Pleasant Hill. And I completely lost control of the car, spun out, dropped into a ditch, uh hopped up and then took out about 10 feet of these people's privacy fence. Oh. So I paid for them to get to get a new fence obviously because I couldn't get my car out in time before people noticed. <laughs> <laughs> and uh but the funniest part of all of that is I noticed 2 weeks later after fixing the fence they planted trees. <laughs> they planted trees right in front of that fence. Sally, that's it. No more kids ruining our fence. We're putting up trees. <laughs> that was that was their philosophy. And you know what? No one's knocked the fence down <laughs> since. Oh, but that poor and tree. It's, it's been uh, almost ten years. So, like a rock. <laughs> I had a I had an accident with. Um, I was going to visit one of my exes. Like. Every day after work, I'd just be like, oh, hey, good night, whatever. I had a really dumb obsession with this idiot. But anyways, I was I was going um, because uh, that was the um, uh, she was just very critical and was mad that I. Uh, I don't I don't even know why I mentioned this has nothing to do with the story. No, she would. Uh, I, th- I think she would like threaten that she's going to go out with my friends if I didn't like change shit up about myself. So so I, I'd be like, oh, I got to go visit her. I got to visit her. So one night I'm fucking going like, it was one of those nights where there was an alert out that you shouldn't fucking drive because there's black <laughs> ice. And I was, but I was coming home from work. I'm like, oh, she's on the way. It was me as well. So I, I go and I'm like completely stopped to turn into her parking lot. Like and, a rock. And there's a fucking <laughs> like, asshole in a bmw <laughs> going full speed like it looked like 60 miles an hour and i didn't know he had his brakes on he was sliding at me 60 miles an hour head-on collision hit my f- like airbag doesn't go off so i hit my face into my steering wheel full speed and all i remember is like waking up at the hospital because it was i had such a bad concussion that so so i wake up at the hospital these fuck and i'm like oh fuck I was in Schiller Park, so what is the closest hospital? Gottlieb, right next to Stone Park, 
where all the cocksucking gangbangers shoot up each other, and there's absolutely horrible fucking service at this hospital. So, like a rock. <laughs> so, so I so they strap me to this, like I I know how Was felt to the chill, you know, because <laughs> I was fucking strapped to the stretcher. I can't move, and I'm like, lady. I feel like I'm I feel like I'm hungover and they're still shoving vodka down my mouth. That's that's what it felt like because I'm like, you gotta unstrap me. I'm gonna fucking hurl. She's like, no, no, no. It it would it would be very advised that you just stay put. Just stay put. I'm like, no, you gotta. I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna choke on my hurl laying down. You gotta let me go. She leaves the room, and I like kind of like swing back and forth like I'm fucking Kill Bill, you know, trying to break out <laughs> or a turtle on its back. Yeah, yeah. And I fall off the stretcher, hurl nothing but mucus all over the fucking floor. It looked like some scene out of Aliens with the fucking, uh, the android when they poke him through. And oh my God, that was such a bad experience. I, I had yeah. to, re- it took me like a month just to think straight from that concussion. But yeah, they can I- really fuck with you. Yeah. They can really fuck with you. Speak- speaking of cars, I don't know if I get- told you guys I went to auto show with Kelly and Gavin. My uh, her boss gave me uh free tickets. Wait, the Chicago Auto Show? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's always a lot of fun. I haven't been in years. It was it was pretty cool. Uh the loop was there. <laughs> the, the former <laughs> loop? Yeah. The, former say loop. The, the old ninety seven nine. Yeah. The, uh, I, I the almost, late loop. I, I almost met Linda Yu from ABC seven. <laughs> Whoa. Cause uh they but Russian shoulders with giants yeah. over here. <laughs> so um yeah, that was I don't know. I guess that was our well. Well, no, I didn't get to get her autograph and a picture with her because she had to leave to do some newscasting, some sexy newscasting. Oh, so we just yeah. got to take a picture at the news board room. What thing. kind of stories do sexy newscasters tell? Like, like what is sexy newscasting? Just like look, look at the In the gyrating it. tornado coming towards <laughs> us. Everybody, <laughs> run! I don't know. The killer was wearing lingerie. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody finds any lubricant spots, that's the happy trail towards the <laughs> crime. No, but <laughs> no, but um. Any, anyways, um, no, they they had a lot of cool. One of the funny you mentioned the simulator thing. They had a like a whole army section where they had old school like army Hummers and shit, yeah. and they had a trailer in there with like Marines. Oh, and they had some cool shit where you win like a Go Army, um tote bags and stuff if you do enough pull-ups nice was was this right by like the guys selling uh in mccormick place is it it, was it right by the guys who like are are selling like car accessories and then there's always like the bentley display right next to it or the army yeah Yeah. (laughs) wonder i know exactly what you're talking about and and so i went into this trailer to see like what the fuck is in this trailer like that was the only trailer on like in mccormick place and they had a they had like a uh, gun shooting simulator, kind of like the first level in Call of Duty. Okay. And the funny thing is they had real guns hooked up to like electronics. So it's like as heavy and you have to reload and shit. And I beat the Marine, <laughs> but it was because I was going buck wild. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know. I think you could have like 12 bullets in a fucking nine millimeter. I, I was acting like there's 50. He's like, oh, well, you won. Good job. Go Army. You know? He was fucking huge. Wait, was he Marine or was he Army? Yeah, it was, it was, he, he, he was Army. He was soldier, I mean. Army soldier. Okay. But, um, yeah, he was fucking huge. He looked like he could play Guile in a Street Fighter movie. Like, he was... I don't know. I, I, like, not to sound offensive or something, but most, like, Marines that or Marines or, or, or Army soldiers or anybody who served, like, Navy, most, most, most people who I know are, like, just, like, I don't know, average overweight people who have you know post traumatic stress they don't they these guys look like nothing could fucking phase them and they're built like arnold you know i'm like where the fuck did you like i got to say like, i have a i have a little bit of a different experience with uh my ex military friends yeah like they're they're generally well, like ex military friends like <laughs> your former with, friends my who friends mili- who are ex military <laughs> okay <laughs> uh who like they're they're still pretty built, like yeah, uh, for the most part. I wouldn't. I mean, they're not. You know, they're not action hero like yeah. movie action heroes, but like there are people that you you can kind of tell pretty quickly that yeah. they're not they're not the guys to or girls in this case uh, to fuck with. Like, yeah, 
Well, the ones there were probably all super fucking built because they're doing a showcase. So that's probably. Oh yeah, they cho- they they're, chose they're the the superheroes. creme de la creme of uh, yeah of the army. They had some cool. We we went on them. Um, they had a jeep. I'm not really a big fan of jeep, but com- but they had a whole obstacle course where they're like <laughs> going over crazy shit. They they had like um bridge that's like, that's made out of like logs and shit yeah oh, and, and it's to come up with new shit i haven't been in like five years and i know exactly what you're talking but, about but it's but it's almost like as steep as a wall yeah you know and then um wait really yeah it's like for the new for the new wrangler or the the rubicon or, or whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever it is now what was funny though is they had you, you like the, the jeeps or the yeah the wranglers or um you know the the beach jeeps mm-hmm. that the roof comes off their uh, axles are real flexible, so when they go over shit like logs or or even the hill, it's kind of boring because you don't feel anything. Yeah, yeah it just like it, like the axle moves, but the actual car doesn't. Yeah, yeah. So so they had this ramp that's kind of like a skateboard kicker, and we were in a Jeep Cherokee, where he literally stopped. You like you go full speed, and then right at the peak of the ramp, you hit the brakes. So he's literally on the passenger side front wheel and the driver's side back wheel just like a low rider tipping because the axles aren't like you know flexible so that was kind of cool because we're like oh fuck is this going to tip over <laughs> yeah this might, this might fall dude i always wondered like who gets those concept cars <laughs> <laughs> like they make fully functional concept cars all those concepts there are fully functional where can i buy one of those yeah probably the auto show you can just go up there I will give twenty dollars. Yeah, to, where is the I bidding? Two million dollars cash. <laughs> give me this right now. You're like, what? Why are you wearing a? Why are you wearing a handcuff suitcase? Don't, <laughs> don't worry about it. Where's the Bentley section? <laughs> Seventeen dollars American. <laughs> but I don't know. Like shit with that Jeep. Like, is this you constantly struggling with driving over logs? Yeah. Like, <laughs> how often do you drive over X Games kicker ramps? <laughs> Yeah, that, right. I mean that's that's why I never <laughs> Try really the new Jeep those Grand those Cherokee. Chicago potholes could really throw your axle for a loop. Yeah, like I, I I don't get what like that's why I was never like a huge. Plus they go real slow. Jeep company like, or that's what I heard the transmissions fucked because it's made to go off road and on logs. Well, that's a that's what I never got about like the big SUV craze and why oh, I yeah. see so many like. I'll be honest, like I like a pickup truck. I I've driven pickup trucks. I don't now, but I have before. Like but it doesn't rock. make any sense for anyone out here yeah. to have a pickup truck. It just it doesn't like. If I were to ever get one again, I would get like a a small one, like, like a yeah. Ranger or something. Not F three fifty. Yeah, a Ford F But like I see the yeah I see these like raised. diesel like like massive you know eight miles per gallon pickup trucks out in like the Chicago suburbs. Like yeah. What, there's a there's actually a, there's a dude who lives in my neighborhood somewhere parks like across from our our uh, apartment all the time that has one of these big ass trucks and I'm just thinking to myself like what the like I don't ever see shit in the back of your truck like, why do you have this like it just has to be a nightmare to have that in the city like yeah I was fucking um when I did renovation my boss was always pissed off he um we were re- re- rebuilding a porch so I had to build like or I had to dig like six foot deep holes into the ground where you're going to pour cement in and they got to be real fucking narrow and shit dude it took me like a whole week and then he's a whole week a whole Uh, fucking i get it a whole week yep and (laughs) sorry so (laughs) so so we went uh, like i think one day uh, he's like yeah just meet me at my house i go to his house he has a ford 350 pickup truck and then he's got a trailer with a bobcat on it with the drill extension where you could just drill a fucking hole in the soil in five minutes. I'm like, dude, what, what are you using that is for? Is this why you don't have your business isn't successful because you're paying people fifteen, twenty dollars an hour to dig holes for a whole fucking week? You know, like And you have a hole maker? Yeah, exa- exactly. I'm, I'm and he's like, Oh, I was too lazy to hook it up. I'm like, well, why do you have like <laughs> What do you do with this truck then? It's just like that's what it's for. Like, how are you too late? Why why spend all of that money? You're too lazy to hook it up. That's what he told me. That's what his excuse was. You know, one complaint I gotta say though about that auto show, and I found out why they didn't have any fucking 
those uh, Tesla cars. None. Really? Yeah, none. There was no, and I found out why. why. They haven't been doing it for like five years because they say that every, that like the demographic of people who go to auto shows are there to just take pictures and fuck around. And since Tesla's, Start at like a hundred grand. They're like, we're not gonna find any customers here. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, yeah, but fucking Ferrari and Lamborghini show up. Yeah, yeah, who the right. fuck's gonna? Well, well, who actually, the fuck's gonna buy one of those? Who's coming through those shows? A- actually, those are in the VIP membership section. Oh, is there really a VIP I, membership? Even, oh, that's kidding. such bullshit. There's, there's literally like a whole fucking crowd of like middle class people. Like, oh I want to take a. You're not good enough to look at these yeah. cars. That, that's what that says. We're not going to make any money here. Let's make a rocket to go to space. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Technically a different company. What, Tesla? Uh, yeah, te- th- Elon Musk owns both of them, but uh, Tesla is separate from SpaceX. Oh, wow. And then there's the Boring Company as well, which is doing trying to do like the Hyperloop. I'd like to issue a formal apology <laughs> to <laughs> SpaceX and Tesla. You just ruined their sales right there. I ruined their sales. We're well, they're not having you at the our, our humble. Uh, yeah, we're going to get hit with a few Our lawsuits. humble conversation here just tanked two major, major players in the. I just. Dude, out of all the bad shit we It was John. Say, John told me to say that. Okay. That's why he left. He's like, I don't. I'm not going to be involved in this yeah. lawsuit. He wants to get there. away from the bomb site. Hear yeah. nothing, see nothing, say nothing. As That's a guest, I I release all liability to you guys. <laughs> You're in this, man. You're in this with us. You can't get out that easy. We're all in this together. One thing that I saw was real cool. You know those new work trucks that are. You know. You know. How, you know how they have those. I think they make them Dodge and Mercedes. Those tall white vans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know how they make the small versions of them, where it's like the size of a minivan, but it's a work van. I didn't know Mercedes did that. I d- I don't know if Mercedes. Is I a definitely I've seen those. Yeah, where it's like a small work van, right? Yeah. So they have a van. It's it's basically a modern hippie travel van, where it's those mini work vans. The roof extends for like a sleep pad. And then there's like a water tank that you hook up. It's basically that like sounds a, awesome. It's like a one person uh, RV, pretty much. So uh, that, that was kind of cool. That that does make me think of uh, Zach Trecker a little bit. Yeah. And did what was it? The pickle or he sold the party pickle. He did. Yeah. Well, so it was the party pickle when it was lime green, and then he painted it brown, and it became the party pooper. <laughs> and just I think that's when I saw it was when it was the party pooper, and now it's just a fucking pooper for selling it. Yeah, well now it's now it's gone. I don't know where it is or what cute nickname it has. He sold it. Did he say it. why? Well, the fucking thing was always breaking down. Yeah, and you couldn't really count on it. Plus, he has a jeep. Yeah, you know, for <laughs> when he's. It's well, just better for when he's driving over logs. <laughs> well, I was gonna say he of all people who own a jeep probably needs one, right? Because he's out yeah, yeah, that. yeah. Oh yeah, he's out in the sticks. He's, whole, he's, he's doing some drive-by harvesting with that sickle <laughs> out the <beach. laughs> Exactly right. Uh, a, a real, a real problem in the uh, <laughs> in the rural counties is the drive-by uh, sickling. It's probably it's what they do in uh, like Amish gangs, you know. Pro- <laughs> yeah, in their horse and buggies. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone remember that? What was it? History Channel did a show about uh, the Amish mafia. No. <laughs> that. It's a real thing. Is it something to do with the Look it uh, up. furniture building? I have no idea. I never watched it. All I remember is the commercials that made it like really melodramatic, and I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> and like, a part of me really, really wants to find it and watch it, and just like because yeah. I know it's got to be funny. The yeah. the Amish mafia. <laughs> what was that movie? There was um, oh man, I forgot what it. It was like, <laughs> I think it was rated as really horrible. Where like Harrison Ford is trying to investigate a murder that happened in an Amish community. So he goes undercover as an Amish person. <laughs> it's like, a, I think it was somewhere between, they, they cast him in that and the fugitive, and they're like, one of these isn't going to fuck up. So do both <laughs> of them. <laughs> right, well, well uh, that, que- yeah, I was say, that question's been answered. <laughs> yeah, right. The Amish one obviously prevailed. Oh yeah, like that's huge the, uh, box office hit. And then U.S. Marshals, the wasn't that kind of like a sequel to it? 
U.S. Marshals? Yeah, to the Amish Mafia. Wasn't that Harrison with, uh, what's his name? The, shit, Tommy Lee Jones. Maybe it was the same director. I don't know, but Harrison Ford in Undercover Amish Adventure and <laughs> U.S. Marshals are always paired together. Like it's films. That'd be a good name for a f- weird band, Undercover Amish Adventure. That I'd buy that <laughs> album. The Amish Mafia. It has to be the like the best uh, folk punk band name. <laughs> <laughs> but they gotta they gotta be real about it, you know. No electronic amps. Oh they, yeah, it's gotta be all acoustic. Yeah. yeah. They hand out what are those things called back in the day when like. You started going deaf. Do you put like that trumpet oh, in your ear? Oh, yeah. uh, the ear trumpet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, all right, we don't use electronics. Everybody grab one. Yeah, the whole show is people turning their heads sideways. Yeah. To <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna be like the 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 burden of of Riot Fest, like like the whole Morrissey thing, you know. <laughs> right. You can still eat meat, but everybody grab an ear trumpet, you know. And anybody taking any photographs, it better be an old school yeah, one. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Stand st- still for two and a half hours, <laughs> <laughs> and it has with to be a uh, sepia tone, otherwise uh, it's to, not like, happening. You have to, like wh- where the person goes behind that accordion camera with the drink. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, li- and like the gunpowder flash. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, those were the days. Making America great again. You making fun of a Kroll Klex song? No, <laughs> that was my Enid, Enid Bunker. Who's Enid Bunker? The Archie's wife. Edith. How th- it is Edith. I know for Edith? sure. 100% sure, man. I'm a huge All in the Family fan. I swear to God, it, then Archie just always m- mispronounced it. We, Speaking he, of, how is that? How is that fucking Netflix show about that? About uh, what? Was it they? They did. They did. I can't remember what Are it's called. Are you thinking of Full House? No, no, no. They did a um, like a all a, in the family. A weird take on the on the Archie like comics. Ah, I can't remember, oh. but it's like really dark. Oh, and no, you're thinking different of different Archie. Yeah, yeah. Is it a different Archie? Yeah, yeah. This was. You remember he was like, like a huge. You're a meathead, Rob Reiner. And Rob Reiner is like, hey, I'm Jewish, but I'm going to marry your daughter. And she was like, daddy, he's not a meathead. No, you know, he, was no mad that's not. he was mad because he's Polish. Oh, Polish. It was all a bunch of Polak jokes on the show. That. No, that's a, that's not what I'm thinking of. It's that there was. And then Edith was all Oh, like, yeah, all in the family's uh, the Jefferson's neighbors. That's yeah. what, yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, the, like, Oh, Archie Bunker. Yeah, never mind. Okay, yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah, wait. I got it. I yeah. was like, I was thinking. Can keep I was thinking the Archie comedy. Yeah. No, I got it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it You're thinking it of like clicked. Archie and Jughead. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And there's Betty and Veronica. And there's like a, there's a new Netflix show. Is there really? That, yeah, that's like animated. Uh, no, it's oh. live action, but it's like Fucking loosely weird. based off of the characters from the comics. But it's like a, it's like a murder intrigue show. Like <laughs> it's fucking like spo- it, I've heard good things, but it's like the premise is fucking weird. Yeah, and like it's like all the characters are are like because I don't know if you ever read the Archie comics. No. They're pretty, you know, like normal, fun loving characters. And in this, all Benign. of them are all, like all of them have like some sort of history and malice attached to them. Like they could all be the killer. So they're ruining the comic. Oh, destroying it. But apparently people are loving the show. And I cannot for the life of me remember what the fuck the show is called. Wasn't it called like Archie's Mysteries? No. They had a comic series like that. It's the name of whatever town they're in. I can't like. Uh, Forsyth? No. No. Um, Anyway. I'm never going to watch it, so I'm <laughs> not super concerned with the fake city in which it takes place. Yeah. You know what was uh, really, I don't know, kind of threw me off. I wouldn't expect that, like, I forget how intense All in the Family could be. Well, what the jo- like, now it would be considered, like, super controversial, but I was watching a clip. So I guess uh, there was a point, I don't know if she really died or if she just died in the show, but Edith in Gene Stapleton. There's a point where All in the Family ends and because she passes away and they're like, Oh, this show's doing too good, so we're gonna keep it on and they and they made like a, a spin off of it, uh Archie Bunker's house or something. 
and without I was without Edith. Yeah, yeah, with with everybody exactly the same, just without his wife. That was the, that was the thing. I, it was really yeah. weird. And uh, I watched this clip, and I was like, "Holy shit!" That was that was that was kind of cool because uh, they had a clip where so um, it's like one of the first episodes. He's like mourning over his wife's death. So so they're going. Sure. Um, it sounds like a real laugh riot. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm yeah. thinking about the laugh track yeah, in the classic background. Classic sitcom <laughs> scenario. So, Widower so, mourning. Yeah. So, so he gets like. Um, what were you wearing? Black. <laughs> uh, uh, the studio uh, audience loves it. So, so he gets a uh, um, like a maid lady, who is uh, Halle Berry. Some, somebody she knows from the Jeffersons. It's a, it's a black lady. And they go shopping together, and he wants to show her like what to buy for that he likes. And they're going shopping, and everyone's staring at him because oh, the racial tension in that show. And they're like, "Why is everyone staring at us?" They're like, "Oh, it's because because they think we're a couple." And I think like one of the like I thought this show was supposed to be like super funny, but then it goes to like the store owner. He's like, "Yeah, what are you doing hanging out?" And then he drops an N bomb, and the Archie just knocks him out and runs out of the store. <laughs> what? Like, yeah, I could. Where is the comedy? It, it, I think it, Edith left with it, you know? Like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> like, it, that, that doesn't sound like it, Archie Bunker. Dude, that's, I know, right? That sounds like the story of a destroyed man. Like, yeah. like that, that his, the death of his wife has just emotionally destroyed him. Yeah. And, like, he, he's acting out. Although I don't know if, if somebody dropped that. Maybe, I mean, I'm glad maybe he stood up for it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but it's like, I didn't. But that's th- very uncharacteristic of him. Yeah. He's he supposed to be this goofy, yeah, and super racist guy. Yeah, like he was always. Well, no, no, he wasn't. Ra- he just cracked jokes. I, I, I think I kind of, I think I understand him. Maybe if that's a bad thing to say about me, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know you just crack jokes about race, but you're you're not really racist. I oh, don't know. Archie Bunker, I think, line. was really racist. I, I mean. Uh, <laughs> Apparently not in the spinoff. They, they, that, maybe yeah, they tried no, to soften just takes, like, this, this image. Radical change well, no, of heart. Well, well, no, I think it has a lot to do with, like, even with today's environment, I think there's a difference between, like, your language and... Do you want a lighter? I have one. I just... I, th- I think there's a difference between, like, uh, the language you use and, like, what you're actually standing for. You know what I mean? Like, like with what, what's going on with people, like, just rioting and protesting about shit, like, I tell everybody, I'm like, dude... Whatever it is, what is it that you stand for? If you can argue for it for five minutes, and what is it that you're contributing to it? And if you're just sitting at home typing on Facebook, well, then fuck. Is there a reason to fight? Why not just get along? You know, and. Well, that's a, the. Uh, all these people are stuck in this idea of. Uh, what is it the the age of education? Like the the idea that you have to go out there, or the age of awareness. Like, yeah. make people aware of these issues and somehow they'll change. Yeah. But no one's actually going out and trying to change it. Yeah. And, like, I love I love that they're, that people are, like, exercising their, their rights in, in, you know, demonstrating and stuff like that. But no one seems to be up until, although fairly recently I think that's changed a little bit, but no one seems to be paying attention to, like, attacking the legal side of it. Yeah. You know, like, uh, I, I gotta say, like, I, I gotta hand it to the, the Parkland students, you know, after the shooting who actually took it, you know, took I it to the legislators. I don't know what that is. Um, in Florida, the school that oh, uh, yeah, recently yeah. that got shut up and all those students, like, mm-hmm. they kind of got it. They were like, well, we can sit and we can protest or whatever, but we're going to take it to our lawmakers because they're the ones who can actually do something about it. And yeah. we're going to force them to do something about it. And, uh, it hasn't been majorly successful, and and uh, the I mean, NRA and several politicians have done their best to belittle scarred children, but yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, w- with every situation, and I think that it kind of like I really admired it, so I just started taking it into a lot of my everyday decision making as far as if I even want to get involved in anything political. It's like my um my buddy at work said he's like, dude, you know. When my when my dad taught me about when you hear shit about it on the news, it's like I want you to argue the other side for fifteen minutes, and if you can't, it's like there's your conclusion. And and what sucks about like gun shit, it's like I could argue both sides, legitimately, you know. Yeah, yeah. and that's uh, uh, but that's a uh, it's always good. Like that was something that I learned from uh, debate 
when I was younger is like uh if you if you don't have if you don't have the argument for your other side if you don't have the perspective and and the understanding of what the other side is arguing then how the how are you ever going to argue against them yeah and that's the i think that's the biggest problem that we have today is instead of instead of trying to understand the other argument and trying to find compromise or trying to be able to sway them appropriately yeah. we just hate we just fucking hate we our go to is well fuck them yeah, and like that's oh, everyth- not everything is fueled by hate now. Everything. Yeah, that's like, I like I was thinking about the gun thing, and and I'm like, all right, well, I'll take the whole alt right position. Like, you can't take it away because then we can't fight against government. I'm like, well, dude, I'm sure there's a nuke that the government could just drop, and your fucking AR-15 isn't going to do shit about it if if you're trying to fight the government, you know. So in that case, it's like, yeah, we don't really need guns, but at the same time, it's like, I don't know, man. I wouldn't be affected if they outlawed them, but at the same time, I'm not affected that it's legal because because I'm not really that. In- I mean, uh, another thing that my friend mentioned about stand up, about saying offensive and controversial jokes. He's like, you got this whole fucking Garden of Eden. Why do you have to go towards this dark, offensive side? So it's funny to me. It makes people like the alt right look stupid when it's like. You got all this other shit values and respect that you could be fighting for, but you're going nuts about having a fucking gun. Like it, it's that important to well, you. Well, it's because the the paranoia uh, uh, bred by the rhetoric towards it from from you know uh, politicians and from the gun industry. Am I dry, well, it drives sales. People yeah. when people panic, they buy more guns. Yeah, and, and it's that Absolutely. simple. And, and this, you know, I I'm a gun owner. I'm a gun owner myself. I I. I grew up learn you know I was taught how to shoot a gun and you know I I've gone out and and hunted and like uh I don't gun hunt I'm a archery hunter but yeah like I don't That's, get the I don't get the 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 tie to it like if so if if one day someone said you got to give up your gun this was something that uh one of my buddies posed to me the other day is like if someone came and said well like give me your gun what would you do yeah and part of me goes, well, I don't want to, like, I think I should be able to have it. But really, at this point, like, I don't need that. I don't use it. it exactly. It, it sits and collects, the, you know, like. That was my argument with the gun nut at work. I was like, dude, I guarantee you, even though you may be educated and you may be, you know, very well under control of yourself, I guarantee you a large we got enough of a population to vote for somebody like Trunk. Trump. I guarantee yeah, Trunk. <laughs> no, but <laughs> and and we got a population who can't pronounce Trump. It says Trunk. No. But no, like you think about that population, I guarantee you a lot a majority of it has like a whole fucking John Wick scenario in their minds. And what I mean by that is they got their gun. Oh, I got it for a robbery or self defense. They're fucking waiting to shoot somebody with it. They're fucking waiting for it. Oh yeah. I mean it's like that, I mean it's like that's why I drive fast in my car. If I can, fuck, why not? I'm bored today. Let's go hundred and twenty miles an hour, you know. Can I bring it back a yeah. few minutes? Uh, so all in the family. Oh, was, yeah, was, let's get let's get it away from show, the, huh? the 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 hot button issues. I don't know. I so I've decided at my new apartment, I'm not going to get internet. Really? Yeah. I don't use it that much. What about, like, uh, emails or shit on your phone? Emails, I don't need that shit when I'm not at work. I mean, yeah, it might save you, you know. Fuck. You know, and, like, I don't watch Netflix. I'm not going to get a television because yeah. I don't watch TV. I am. Who watches, like, local TV anymore? I don't. I don't know. Yeah, it's like as much as like the AM radio. I power, use. You know? I use a lot of streaming service. But yeah, yeah. But like, I, yeah, we don't. I don't local. Know, we don't pay for cable. And we don't listen. We don't definitely don't watch local channels. Like Sven Gulli, <laughs> probably the only thing I watch. Well, yeah. It's, well, Sven Gulli's on me, me TV now and the U. Okay. So, anyway, that's two chances. And but yeah, no, I think I'm gonna do like a very minimalist. Uh, frugal kind of living arrangement. It's good. And you guys have to visit me. Bring food and furniture. <laughs> Absolutely. I can no. definitely help with uh, at least one of those. 
on the furniture. So that was the <laughs> all. all in the I'll do what I can. That, yeah, but I just thought it was getting kind of like heavy with. Oh, like, with gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's gun cool. thing. Yeah, you know? yeah. No, that's cool, man. And plus, it started with all in the family, so yeah. I just thought I'd bring it back. You know. Yeah. But we're all friends here. Well, no. The, well, so speaking of all in the family, and I don't mean to get heavy on all in the family. <laughs> but it's, but it's just. But like, he's about to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, I, well, I mean, like with, with with the way shit was then, the way like the shit that they joked around about, it's like we. I think we were headed in a good direction where like people can joke about it and not get hostile, and it and it went into a direction instead where, um, by people bringing up uh, like old shit, people came out of nowhere saying you should be sensitive about this you should this shouldn't be funny to you and it's like well i think we've came a long way from i mean look at i think uh a lot of shit used to be a lot more violent i don't know a lot more vi- uh, now these days it's just kind of like everyone's more towards uh law making and reparations as far as when it comes to anything having to do with um any racist action you know i don't know well like, 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 you know, it, it's, it's like, it, like people would I remember I was talking to my friend at work. He's like, dude, you don't want to fucking, if you're, if you're a black guy, you don't want to go to Bridgeport. I'm like, why? I never even knew about that. Did you know about this shit? No, I've never. I've I, never I never heard, heard about that. this shit until recently that I guess I read that Bridgeport used to be a heavily working class South side. Like it was all like white union workers. And if you weren't anything white, they did every fucking thing possible to drive you out of that fucking neighborhood. Like everybody knows, like here. Well, I, I mean, sh- Chicago is notoriously segregated. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like that kind of stuff, as far as like violence, I mean, I, I don't know. I think people are a lot more accepting these days. I don't know. I think we've come a long way. I think that and, and true I, to a certain degree. Like uh, you know, it it is better. Statistically, it it is it is better. We live in a safer, uh, you know, place. But you also have seen, in recent years, a rise in like hate crimes and hate group mm-hmm. creations and things like that. So there needs to be people who are active about it. But I do think that sometimes it does, it it does uh, polarize things at times. Like it. it it makes it seem like a, that. Uh, it makes it seem like it's so bad everywhere you go. Yeah, yeah. And that everybody you're going to meet. And then people get paranoid. Gonna, and yeah. Buy some guns. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And then we're getting too deep, aren't we? Yeah. So does anyone have a cute story about high school to tell? <laughs> cute story about high school. <laughs> All right. Uh, back to uh, the <laughs> the, the voting one? thing. Uh, most likely to in the in the yearbook. Sure. I got voted uh, most unique wardrobe. Which was Ooh. actually like a huge fuck you to me because people thought I'd dress like weird as fuck. Like a popper? Yeah, like a popper. Oh. What's a popper? Like the prince in the popper? Oh. Like a poor person. I thought you said popper like as in like a drug. No. <laughs> I thought you meant popper as someone who like peacocks. No, I meant <laughs> I because meant popper like jalapeno popper. Spicy. Exactly right. And satisfying. That's one way to describe it, yeah. So you Actually, I'm I'm not gonna interrupt. I'm not gonna get get de- I just wanted to mention one joke from last night about guns. It was pretty funny. Okay. Sebastian Maniscalco, he's this this was hilarious. He was talking about how the biggest fucking problem now with everything, and I think it is parents taking part in this shit. Because I think people didn't realize how hard teachers' jobs were and how hard they wanted to work towards. So parents are just like, oh, you know, you know, you know how back in the day it'd be like, oh, it's always the rich parents that just don't give a fuck about the kid and just have like maids and shit take care of them and they don't have a relationship with them. Yeah, I think like a lot of parents now do that. And a lot of p- parent people who shouldn't have a fucking kid are having one. And he was talking about how he's like, man, in my household, my mom would go through all my shit. I couldn't hide a fucking Playboy in that motherfucker because every single day she's in my room crawling through the Legos, through all my jackets, through all my notebooks that I'm not doing homework with. He's like, how the fuck did this guy hide like four different fucking machine guns? Where the fuck are these people's parents? 
Well, uh, I don't so, want to. I don't want to get yeah. further into it. Well, I don't. It, I, okay, <laughs> I guess it was a lot funnier when he said it, but <laughs> sure. But I I can relate to it because my mom used to go through my shit like all the fucking time. Like I don't know. Oh, they uh, yeah. My parents definitely kept tabs. Well, uh, we'll put it that way. Yeah, mine did not, but you know, I'm well adjusted, so. And I end up being the suspect for shooting up a place, most likely to. Hey, I <laughs> talked to that CEO. What the fuck, man? That I just want to be the one most likely to hide a Playboy well, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Those jokes crossed the line at the workplace. Yeah. But you got to hang out with one of the CEOs. What You want to know a cute, funny joke about work? <laughs> is it is it more about serial Wait, killers? No, no, no. <laughs> is it as well, cute as the one with the kid that falls in the gorilla pit? Well... Well, what well what made okay? So this just adds and spices up that meeting even more. So what was funny is I think it was either her birthday or uh, her Christmas. Kelly, I always like getting these these like real tacky, quirky, weird presents for people that like you don't hear about. So I got her a custom made bobblehead uh, of of her. And you, you, yeah, you can do this. You you uh, you mail in like a picture of like each angle of a person and all that, and it, it comes with a sound clip. So like uh, Kelly, like like everybody, like people tell me that, especially on the show, I say so or like or basically a lot. And for her, um, oftentimes when I do something dumb or say something ridiculous, she'd say, "Yeah, sure." So I wanted to have that clip in there, like just anonymously record her. And then, like, it'd be, like, bobbling. Yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah. And my boss, the manager, the one who... Uh, so the manager, and then there's the CEO. The manager who interviewed me, I can never read him. He's so fucking weird. He, like, he reminds me of the guy in the movie Hitman. Just, uh, you, you know? He's just <laughs> very um, poker-faced. And he's he's just so weird because he'll come by randomly just smiling and like really glassy eyed. What'd you guys do this weekend? I played in my jam band. It's called the Jam Band Mosquitoes Band. That's what that's what it's That's really the name. Yeah. That's awful. The, yeah, and that's really he, bad. He plays uh maracas. <laughs> oh. So um what was funny is I was telling everyone, I'm like, hey man, we should get Jeff a customized bobblehead because he always says, So does that make sense? So and like the whole time, we're in this interrogation room again, and I'm t- and he's telling me about the borderline at work, where you should joke around, and he's like, "So this is what you should joke around, and this not." So does that make sense? And like, it was so fucking hard for me to not just start cackling <laughs> in- insanely. So does that make sense? So does that make like just picturing the bobblehead? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Has has speaking of my has anyone ever played whirly ball actually? I've been to whirly ball, but I didn't partake. I just sat and drank. I I heard it's like fucking impossible. It's I've actually like, I, yeah I've never played. It's like lacrosse with uh, bumper cars, right? Yeah. So, or, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I I'm I'm mad that we haven't had a fucking karaoke party at any of these work parties. That would be hilarious. Just oh my god, what song would Meredith sing? Let me think. What's on the Black Panther soundtrack? These boots are made for walking. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah. I think, I think at the point where I'm at, being the gun suspect, I'd sing all by myself by R.E.M. <laughs> <laughs> One is the loneliest number. Uh, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I don't know what else anybody else, Mister Mister Manager. He'd probably is my jam band allowed to play? I want to show off my maraca skills. You know. Do you get it because they rhymed band with band, and mosquito band isn't a thing? Yeah. What and the what? F- jam band mosquito band? Can <laughs> we like? Can you get an explanation on that? Like, I no, j- no. I think it's something the mosquito jam band maybe. The, the, yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> it doesn't make sense. We suck your blood. <laughs> yeah. uh, and 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 the worst part is that it's not a jam band. It's just covers of like fucking Almond Brothers and Blue Oyster Cult. That's so they're they're a jam band cover band. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Jam band, mosquito band, cover band. Jam band, cover band, jam mosquito band, band. <laughs> you know what is really good, by the way. 
Speaking of jam, why the fuck my phone is just like randomly vibrating? Anyways, have you ever had fig jam? <laughs> <laughs> I have not. No, that is fucking amazing. I saw. I I was um. I think buying that like, you know, organic natural apple cider vinegar, and they had it in that aisle like uh. It was like Sicilian fig jam. I'm like, oh my fucking god! Can you imagine like that on toast? It's like a freshly made fig Newton, you know. I got, <laughs> I gotta say, I love me some fresh figs. All yeah. right, they're expensive, but I love it. Yeah. Do you swallow the shell, or are you supposed to? I don't even know. Shell. Yeah, like the doesn't it come in? Or maybe I'm thinking of something. I else. mean, it's got like, like a rind, leathery. but yeah, yeah, but yeah, you eat the whole thing. Well, it, re- it, it it confuses me because I know like people would think I'm weird that when I eat shrimp, I eat the I eat the the part you hold, the fucking tail. The tail? Yeah, I just that is a little weird. I see the whole thing. I'm like, I mean, I'm sure it's not bad for you, just texture wise. Yeah, it reminds me when I bite my nails. <laughs> All right, mm. you're making. Yeah, I was gonna say I really <laughs> want shrimp now. Yeah. Leave the tail on. How we were talking earlier about a bad crab and a good crab, right? Yeah. <laughs> In the car, but not on the podcast. Yeah, in the yeah. in the in the car. We just need to take the fucking podcast into the car, actually into yeah. the driver simulator. Man, <laughs> yeah, right. Cruising, just deal with me and my boner. Cruising Fine. USA themed, and you're getting some roadhead. Bill, you're going the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> that's been dick jokes. I think. Are we ready to? I'm just I'm trying to end this because I kind of have to pee again. Yeah, me too. Same yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. so okay. All right. All right. Are we good? So, yeah. So I just want to do a quick few shout outs. Okay. Yeah, shout outs, wrap up. Yeah. So uh, above all else, we'd like to thank our listeners across the pond in Ireland, and uh, for those watching extra carefully, you might have noticed that I've been drinking wine from a Guinness glass. Sorry about that, lads. And uh, again. It's special like having, things. It's like having ketchup in Chicago, right? <laughs> yeah, right? Something. Psh. It's like, it's Psh. it's something like that. Uh, special thanks again to our unofficial sponsor, Burger King, home <laughs> of the Whopper. And unless Sandry has anything he'd like to say, no, I think that's about it. Always a pleasure, guys. That thank you so much for joining us. Of course, uh, this and has uh, been another fucking riveting episode of Hear Nothing, See Nothing. That's about right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. All right. He he's not talking louder. <laughs> he's gone. He left us. Bigger and better things. But good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. I've got. <laughs>